As a freelance journalist, I spent a lot of time researching to craft the right words in my stories. A favorite resource is my thesaurus. There's nothing like a deep dive into it with an assist from the Oxford Languages Dictionary to uncover a word's root meaning. Today I want to talk to you about the meaning and impact of one word, empathy. Some of you might be thinking right now, do I really need to hear another TED Talk on this? So consider this assertion. What we hear and what others say can mean different things to each of us. I want to get us all on the same page about empathy and its power to alter others' lives and our own. So where can we go to find an easy to understand example of it and an authentic meeting? How about pop culture? In 2013, the Cleveland Clinic created a modest training video for its employees and uploaded it to YouTube. In it were people from many departments, including patients who visited. Their individual challenges, a serious diagnosis, a failing marriage, financial troubles, were seen in transparent thought clouds. At the end of the video, the viewer was asked, if you could stand in someone else's shoes and see, hear, and feel what they do, would you treat them differently? The video went viral. The Cleveland Clinic showed the world what empathy in action is, using basic human senses to understand someone else. Many of us think that empathy means compassion, which has its root in to suffer together, or in the word sympathy, which has its root in to share feelings. But empathy doesn't have that emotional interaction that other words like these do. Empathy is neutral, yet a steadfast support. The Oxford Dictionary defines empathy as the ability to understand the feelings of another. I think an insightful description takes a pointer from Aristotle. Empathy is understanding that is free from passion. In my family, a real life example exists during football season. My son, Eric, is a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. When the Cowboys lose a game, I can express empathy to him, despite my being a lifelong Philadelphia Eagles fan. I can say to him, I don't feel compassion for your sorrow. I don't tell him I'm sorry for his team's failure. But I do understand deeply what a game loss feels like, having experienced a few of those myself. I can say to him in sincerity, tough loss, how are you doing with it? I didn't always think of empathy this way. For me, distinguishing what empathy is and is not came after spending $99 and losing half of my identity through another pop culture trend. Nearly seven years ago, I became one of the 45 million people who purchased a DNA test kit, spit into a tube, and sent it off to be evaluated. I was fascinated by the cultures of my four immigrant grandparents. I thought it would be fun to learn about the ethnicities in my family tree. Six weeks later, I learned the truth about myself. I was no longer an only child. Half of my family and medical histories were unknown to me. And I began a journey that yielded more than genetic genealogy facts. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote in the 13th century, the greatest kindness one can give to any man is leading him from error to the truth. Kindness isn't a word that I would use to describe my being led to my truth. My dad who raised me was not my biological father. My childhood mentor was. He was my mother's longtime boss and I called him Uncle Tom. He had visited me when I was away at college, here at Villanova. I loved and respected him like I did my parents. I was heartbroken and shocked and furious with this discovery. 
Processing my new reality took several weeks because I had to accept the painful truth that the people who had parented me had done so with deception. At age 57, I had three brothers, two sisters, and over 20 nieces and nephews. If you think like I did that this was a rare occurrence, think again. In 2022, researchers at the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, found that over 10% of DNA test takers had a parent or grandparent who was not biologically related to them or had an unknown sibling. If you're doing the math, that's 4.5 million people to date, more than the entire population of the city of Los Angeles. In genetic genealogy terms, we're referred to in a family tree as a non-paternity event, or use the common term of not parent expected. The acronym is NPE. In secret social media groups, I learned about the variables that create an NPE in addition to a consensual relationship. They dispelled the narrow belief that there's only one way this can happen. Adoption, donor conception, sexual assault, and many other circumstances give rise to the growing numbers of NPEs revealed by DNA testing. The history of NPEs is as old as time, as in the story of Moses, and continues to be a pop culture plot twist in entertainment, like Star Wars and Game of Thrones. Want to explain what an NPE is to a child? Sit down and watch the Christmas movie Elf, because Buddy the Elf is an NPE who searches for and finds his biological father. On St. Patrick's Day, 50 to 80 million people in the worldwide Irish diaspora will wear a bit of green and celebrate their ancestry. Later this year, over 1 billion Asians will celebrate the Diwali Festival of Lights, and over 2 billion ethnically diverse people will commemorate Christmas. Imagine a DNA test showing you have no connection to a culture or faith, but rather to a heritage and family that are foreign to you. The news would be devastating wouldn't it? For many months after my discovery, I struggled with anger because there would be no great confrontation or reconciliation with either my mother or birth father. They had died many years ago. I frantically searched for healthy ways to process my feelings because my dad was still alive and I was his caretaker. He was 93 when I made my discovery and not in good health. I chose not to share my truth with him, nor ask him the questions and find the answers that I dearly wanted. I understood the shattering emotions that this discovery gave rise to. No one deserved this. My silence was an expression of empathy. The impact of my mother and birth father's deception was much more difficult to resolve because I had lost my understanding of them when their lie was exposed. Then one morning, while reading social media, I stumbled across a quote by C.S. Lewis. It said, I sat with my anger long enough until she told me her real name was Grief. All of the raw feelings that I had been feeling for so long were finally revealed for what they were. I wasn't angry. I was deeply grieving all of the shared moments that were lost to me. And then I mourned a lifetime not spent with half of my family. Through this, I gained the perspective that my parents' fears of shame and social disgrace were powerful deterrents to the truth. I thought about the stress they imposed upon themselves 
keeping lifelong secrets and telling lies. How very sad for them to have lived for decades this way before they died. The Oxford Dictionary definition was right. Empathy was in the ability to understand the feelings of another. And I found it from my mother and birth father. And my life regained peace. And yet empathy can be difficult and elusive for so many of us in day-to-day -day interactions. Here's what I've observed. Distilling our emotions out of everyday reactions takes conscious effort. And human relationships are often complicated and influenced by prior adverse experiences. So how do any of us overcome this, these obstacles to empathy? In searching for answers, I completed professional certificate programs at Florida State University studying trauma and resilience because I'm a no stone unturned kind of research driven writer. I wondered, could resilience ignite empathy? Or was it self care? Or was it just the luck of the genetic draw? Here's the abridged version of what I learned. The single most common factor for a child in developing resilience is one stable and committed relationship with a supportive parent, caregiver, or other adult, as reported by the Centers for the Developing Child at Harvard University. For adults, the American Psychological Association stated in 2020, resilience involves behaviors, thoughts, and actions anyone can learn and develop. The ability to learn resilience is one reason why research has shown resilience is ordinary, not extraordinary. Any adult, every adult, can learn resilience. This was an aha moment in my training when I recognized the bridge from trauma to resilience whether a stable relationship or self-directed actions, the connective span was empathy. Here's an example. Consider this. Have you ever encountered an overbearing person and silently thought to yourself, what's wrong with you? And then silently answered yourself and said, crazy stupid jackass. Can you feel the tension rising? Now, Consider the same scenario with the same type of arrogant person going off on you and asking the question, what happened to you? And silently answering it with words like, troubled, angry soul. An empathetic perspective shift yields a different reaction inside of us, doesn't it? I'm not a mental health professional, nor a social scientist. I'm a regional journalist who's published stories about others' lives in my own. I seek out the right words in my stories so that when they are read or spoken, they can sustain people. Most of us have had trauma or shock in our lives, some more, some less. Can you recall a time when someone's words their empathy made you feel better. Or a time when a lack of empathy made your burden heavier. Today, we have a new understanding of the word of empathy, and it includes a dictionary definition, a riff on Aristotle, and some very interesting social science facts to consider. One, understanding is the root of empathy. Two, there is no emotional cost to express it. And three, empathy can bridge the gap from trauma to resilience. If I had had this information when I had made my discovery, my path might have been easier. Sharing these words today may make it easier for others. So I'd like to challenge you all with a question similar to the one that the Cleveland Clinic asked its community over a decade ago. If you would choose to see, hear, 
and feel what others do. Might you treat them differently now? <laughs>